Welcome back to our series, How to Pray. My name is Avraham Apatow, and today we're speaking about the Ladder of Prayer. This is a really exciting day today because everything we've done up to this point has really been a preparation to explain to you some of my insights about the structure of prayer. And with all this background behind us now, we can look at the structure of prayer and we'll see that it fits very neatly into this cosmological triadic structure that we've been explaining. That is, that the ancients saw the world as having three primary parts. There was an earthly world, a heavenly world, and a godly world. Well, these three parts form the basis for understanding our structure of prayer, because our structure of prayer is really an imitation of a temple. And you know what a temple is? It's an imitation of the universe. And so it has to follow these three levels. If we're going to ascend on this ladder, we're going to have to go from where we stand. That's on the earthly plane. We're going to have to ascend, ascend from there to the heavenly plane, to the realm of the stars and the planets, and then ascend from there to the angelic and heavenly, to the godly realm. And that is our very purpose in prayer. And we're going to begin this journey by looking at the first step. And that first step is in what's called Psuki de Zimra, the verses of praise. Now, I'm going to be sharing you this approach, which is based on my study and practice within the Yemenite tradition. The Yemenite tradition is one of the oldest traditions historically of prayer, and it may even be the oldest and most authentic. But the key point is not the history. We do certainly know it is one of the rivals to be the most authentic historically. But what I'm going to focus today is conceptually. And we'll see that this approach conceptually is very consistent with the picture that we've been describing. And we'll see it also fits very consistently with the halakha. The Yemenites begin their prayer service in the morning, not from Hodu or Korbanot, but from the Baruch Shamar, or actually there's a small verse of praise before the Baruch Shamar, but then the Baruch Shamar is the introduction to the blessing. Now, the key point is that this blessing is going to introduce several Mizmorim, songs of David from Tehillim. And as we know, Halakha rules that if someone is unable to say the whole section of Pesuke de Zimra, all the different verses of praise, what should they eliminate and what would be the most essential? So the most essential, according to the Mishnah Brewer, is the Ashray. And also within the Ashray, we see that the most important verse is the Poteyachet Yedecha. So Halacha rules that if one is going to say the blessings before these praises and the blessings after the praises in the section called Psuke de Zimra, the essential requirement is the Ashrei and Kavana on this one verse, Poteyachet Yedecha. Now, why is that? Because that's going to reveal really what is the most main point of doing the Psuke de Zimra. And we shall see that that parak of Tehillim, Ashrei, is all about God's kingship and his providence, which corresponds to exactly what we've been speaking about regarding the earthly plane and then the notion of Melech Olam in our formula for a blessing, king of the world, which corresponds to the earthly plane. So let's take a look at a couple of verses at the center of the Ashrei. Leho deal of Neadam Guvorotov, to reveal to men his mighty acts, Ukavod Hadar Malchuto, and the glorious splendor of his kingship, Malchutacha Malchut Koromim, your kingship is the kingship for all times, Umem Shaltacha Bechol Dorvador, and your rulership, which is also based on that same word for king is in every generation. So mech Hashem l'chol hanoflim v'zochef l'chol hakifufim Hashem supports all the fallen and straightens all the bent. 
אין אחד אחרי סברו, ואתה נותן להם את הכלם ביתו. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food at its proper time. פותח את ידיך ומשביע לכל חי רצון. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living being. So we could not have a more beautiful description of God's kingship and his providential care and love for his creation than this section and especially this verse, Potech et Yedecha, because God opens his hand, he doesn't only satisfy the needs of human beings, he satisfies the needs for sustenance for all of his creation, every single creature upon the earth. So there's no greater statement of his providence on the earthly level than this verse. Perak and Tehillim, and this particular verse. And as we see, Halakha rules that this is the essence of the Pesukit de Zimra. So there's a direct correspondence between this and the very picture of the universe that we've been speaking about. We can add to this a couple of very interesting historical points that I learned from the Yemenite, the, the Yemenite tradition. In their handwritten manuscripts, what they show is that The Yishtabak prayer, that is, Psuki de Zimra, does not include the Shirat Ayam and its introductory verses. But instead, the Psuki de Zimra section only includes the songs of David. Now, why is that? The reason is because in our blessing of Burk Shamar, we're blessing on the praises that were said by David Amelet. So, the Psuki de Zimra inclu- includes in its original historic formulation, only the words of David HaMelech, both in Tehillim and from Tanakh. Moreover, if you look carefully at the blessing of the Baruch Shemar, it's all about praises to the king. And in Yishtabak, again, it's also about praises to the king. In the Yemenite version, there's five different expressions of kingship, plus the six being the Melech Olam, that's part of the formula for blessing. And the direct object of the blessing is not El Melech, as in other traditions, but just simply Melech. We also see that after the long list of praises in Yishtabak, the final two are on his kingship and rulership. So obviously, the whole notion of kingship is what is emphasized in this whole section of the Pesuki de Zimra. In our, in our daily prayers. Moreover, we see that it is the praises written by our king. So it's a section describing the praises of the heavenly king from our earthly king. And what's so beautiful is that David and Melech really represents not some metaphysical, metaphysical speculation about God, but is... has the gift to reach into the heart of what it means to be a human being and describe the essence of all the suffering and longings and prayers of human life. In other words, Dovin and Melech captured what it means to be a human being on this earthly plane. So everything about the Psuki de Zimra section reflects this understanding of Of the structure of the cosmos that the ladder of prayer begins from the earthly plane and that it will extend upwards into the heavenly plane so we'll see in the blessings of the Shema that those are going to lift our souls and our, our vision towards the stars and the angel and then that is all a preparation to the Shema which is the declaration and the contemplation of God's unity and which is really the essence of the heavenly world. So that's a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing, but you can see very clearly that this structure of Shachrit, according to these ancient evidence, fits very perfectly in this cosmo- cosmological picture that we've been describing. And why is this so essential? Because if we want to make the ascent on the ladder of prayer, we need to understand the structure and the path of that journey. And that has been the point of our series, is to explain to you that our tradition has a very clear vision of our cosmos, what a human being is, our place in it, what the Torah is, and how our prayers are guiding us 
from our earthly existence to profound connection with our Creator.